Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan for Lawn Fawn and in today's video we are going to create this cute Valentine scene using some new and old products. So first I'm going to walk you through some of the supplies that I'll be using today. I'm going to pull a sentiment off of the Simply Celebrate Hearts stamp set. I'm using the swans and some cattail, cattails off of a swan soiree and then I have the heart garland backdrop in the portrait style. I'll be using the cattails border and also the stitched simple wavy border. And then I have the falling hearts stencil to create my background. I started by picking out the images that I wanted to include on my scene. So I have the cattail here, the two swans, a little heart, and then that kind of piece of grass and a lily pad and the lotus flower. And some of the images like the cattail, I will stamp a couple times. So I laid them out onto some Expressit cardstock using my mini misty tool so I can stamp them out all at once. And then I'm going to ink them up in the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which is safe for coloring with alcohol markers. So I'm inking them up really well. I'll close the door of my misty and to just stamp those down. And if I need to, I can ink them up and stamp it again to make sure I have some really crisp lines. Then I can start working on coloring. Now the markers that I'm using today are going to be my Tri-Blend Spectrum Noir Markers, which is an alcohol marker. And I first need to apologize. I'm trying to specify my words as best as I can because I have some sinus, sinus issues going on right now, so I am pretty stuffed up. So I'm coloring these with my alcohol markers laying down a light color and just coming in with a dark color to try and add a little bit of shadow to them. Now some of these areas are pretty small so I really don't need to add a ton to it. I can just come in with a light marker and then maybe just add a line for the darkest color. The lily pad, I am going to use three different shades of green on it but you could just get away with one because most of it will probably get covered up with your flower anyway. Then for the cattails, I laid down a light brown color and I'm going to come in with a dark shade and just add a line on one side. And then moving on to the swans, I really wanted to leave most of it white and just add a little bit of shading. So I grabbed, I think these are some brown grays that I wanted to try out on the swans. I added some shadow area to it on the wings and the back of the head. I was a little nervous at first adding this color because it came out a little bit darker than I thought, but as I slowly blended these out, it does give it a nice shaded look, and if I really needed to, I could have came in with a blender marker, which is just having some blending solution in it uh, to help kind of fade that back if I really needed to. I'm going to color my other swan the same way, starting out except with the mid-tone instead of the darkest color to help lighten that up and I actually kind of like it this way because it almost signifies two different swans here and for my card it is going to be the husband and wife so I will be giving this to my husband for Valentine's Day and then I'm finishing off with a light pink heart. Now if you happen to use the tri-blend markers from Spectrum Noir I am going to group them together here so you could stop the screen if you wanted to take a screenshot of the colors that I used. These are labeled just a little bit differently than Copic markers, so I thought it was easier to just pop these in here so you could screenshot it. Then I'm going to take all of the coordinating dies for my images. I'm going to just line them up, hold them down with a low tack tape, and run these through my die cut machine. For my background, or one part of it, I'm using the Heart Garland Backdrop Portrait, and I'm going to die cut this out of white cardstock. I'm also going to be taking the Cattails Border, die cutting that from some white cardstock, and then also the stitched simple wavy border to kind of help build up my scene. Now one of the reasons I'm showing all of this is because I apologize. I thought I hit the record button when I was ink blending and I did not. So as I put the card together, I will walk you through the colors that I used to ink blend. I also did not catch the coloring of my hearts on that garland. So I'm going to show you a few of them right here. I had die cut out a second panel of this heart garland border anyway because I wanted to add stability. And to color in the heart, I'm starting with a light pink and filling in the whole heart. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit darker of a pink or a red 
and just add a little bit of that dark color to one side of each heart. After I add the darkest color, I'm going to go back over it with my lightest to help blend that out. And I had just gone through and repeated those steps on all of the hearts on the garland, but leaving the main garland piece white, the string that's connecting them, I left white. So after all of my hearts are colored, I'm going to attach these two pieces together. And regardless of me hitting that record button prior, I had planned on having two pieces glued together anyway, because that string that is holding my heart is pretty delicate and I wanted to add some stability. So I'm taking some liquid glue and I'm adding that all around the border and also behind all of the hearts. And I'm going to attach those two pieces. Now here's the cattail border. I ink blended this with a twisted citron and pine distress oxide inks. And I also had gone over my cattails with some brown ink to color them in, or you could do some Copic markers. So I just added my tops of my cattails with my liquid glue and tweezers. And this is how my scene is looking so far. The cattails are going to be on the bottom. Here is that stitched wave that I had done. And the ink blending for that is Cracked Pistachio, Peacock Feathers, and Blueprint Sketch Distress Oxide Ink. So I'm just laying everything out about where I want it to go. So this is where my swans are going to go and just deciding how much of the background I'm going to leave open. Now for the very back for my scene, I have a piece of 80 pound white cardstock that I'm attaching to my make art station and securing the falling heart stencil over the top. So this is layer one and you can see I pushed it up a little bit because with this stencil, the hearts are uh, kind of more busier at the top and they fade off as they get towards the bottom. So I pushed that up so they weren't there weren't so many hearts on there at the top. Now that first layer I had gone over with ballet slippers, which is a really light pink. And now for my second layer, I'm going over that with guava ink. After this second layer and I pull the stencil up, I decided I wanted to fill in some more areas with the heart. I really wasn't paying attention to lining them up. I think this stencil looks great no matter how you line it up. So I brought that first stencil back in and just using some of the leftover ink on my brush to help fill in the background just a little bit more. And then I took the blending brush once again and went over that to kind of tone down that background so it's not so white. Now I can start working on filling in my scene. And this is actually where one of my mistakes happens in this card project is I added tape runner to the bottom, bottom of my cattails and then I took liquid glue to the very top. I wouldn't add that liquid glue because what I should have done was added my swans first. I wanted the swans to be kind of tucked behind the cattails and I, I still make it work, but it was a little bit trickier. Now I'm adding tape runner to the back of my waves and I'm gonna add this to the front of my card project. I have a little bit hanging off, but that is fine because I'll trim that down later on. I'm taking my uh, border here and adding that over the top using some liquid glue. And then I'm going to come to the point where I realized I should not have glued down my cattails just yet, or I could have used a tape runner, which is a little bit easier to remove. So I did lift up the cattails a little bit. Thankfully, it did not rip my cardstock. But then I'm taking the swans and adding them in, kind of tucking them behind those cattails. And once again here too, and that one cattail I really had to pull up. So I'm going to add a little bit of liquid glue behind that to be able to secure that back down. So then I can come in, in with my other elements. I had colored in some pieces of grass and cattails and the lotus flower and lily pad. So now I can start adding those into my scene to kind of help build this up. So the stitched waves I was able to peel up pretty easily because that was just using the tape runner. So I kind of just peeled that up a little bit to add my cattail. And then I have my lily pad and lotus flower. And I decided to just add that right in the center there between the swans because I really couldn't I really couldn't pull up any more of my card without ruining it. So it's going to go just right in the center there. Now, like I said, if I were to redo this, I definitely suggest adding your swans to your stitched waves first before you add your cattails and grass. I do also have that little heart that I had die cut out and I'm popping that up with a foam square. I have one more cattail that I tried to sneak in to kind of make it cohesive for each side of my swans so I can peel that up and add that in and then I can move on to adding my sentiment. 
I'm going to be using a sentiment off of that Simply Celebrate Hearts stamp set. And I have a piece of chili pepper cardstock loaded into my Misty tool. My sentiment is lined up, so I'm picking that up with the door of the Misty. And then I'm going to prep the cardstock with an anti static powder tool so that I can heat emboss my sentiment. To get a really nice crisp white sentiment, I'm inking that up with the Yeti pigment ink and I'm going to stamp this down. I'm just stamping down gently and I could stamp that twice to make sure I have a really nice good ink impression. Then I'm sprinkling on the Lawn Fawn white embossing powder, kind of tapping off any excess and then melting that with my heat tool. I'm going to line up a banner die over that sentiment to trim that out and then I have some foam squares added to the back. And I'm going to place this up towards the top. Now this I had to kind of shimmy around a little bit to place this in between the hearts so it didn't overlap that dimension that's already on the front of my card. Now I have one last finishing touch that I wanted to add to my hearts that I had colored. And I'm going to be taking the clear glaze and I'm going to go over all of the hearts that are on that garland and also the heart that is in the middle there. And that just actually creates a little bit more dimension to it makes it really shiny and really pretty. I'll set that off on the side to dry, but this creates such a pretty added touch to your background. And I love adding this clear glaze lately. So that finishes off my card project for you today. Thank you for bearing with me and my whole sinus issue I have going on in here. I hope you enjoyed today's card project. Thanks so much and see you soon. Bye.